This is a short video about building a simple phase shift oscillator using a valve. Whilst there are many circuits of this type in both books and online, in my experience, excluding schematic errors, there are plenty of accompanying unhelpful diagrams and tables detailing component value combinations that simply cannot and do not work. This is one of the commonly seen circuits for a valve based phase shift oscillator that we'll be using. This can be seen used with both triode and pentode valves. The values in our diagram being optimized for use with our universal chassis project running with an HT of just under 100 volts. Using the component values here we can expect a waveform of around 630 microseconds which amounts to a frequency of around 1.6 kHz. Certainly a useful frequency if one is building the circuit as a tone generator, simple reference oscillator or a stable audio modulation source for test purposes. In the circuit we see here, we wired up the 1 meg front panel potentiometer to act as a variable screen grid control. We feel that this will be of interest for anybody wanting to choose the best waveform for their circuit that starts oscillating reliably by trial and error, rather than simply calculating the technically correct value. As usual, not a lot to see. Control on the front here is the only one that's operational, hence we put the knob on it. This will simply adjust the voltage on the screen grid of the pentode. If anybody builds this using the valve we have in here then one mega ohm is the fixed value you'll need. Quick look inside. you notice we're using an EF91 valve. Uh, this is because we happen to put that holder in place there to test the crystals for the crystal testers. So it seemed to be as this EF91 was lying around, what better idea than use it for the uh, phase shift oscillator. So let's have a quick look underneath. Quite a few components to be seen around the base of the B7G valve holder, uh, including the three capacitors, the 330 picofarad, which are used for the shifting of the phase. Um, there we go, that's about all there is to say. Let's turn it around and see it working. We're seeing a close up of the meter because the uh, current drawn by this circuit is very small. So if we turn on the, the unit we'll see how much current we're taking and you'll see why it is we had to do a close-up. There we go. It's about 300 microamps there. Now that is with it set at the setting we want to uh, give a decent display. So it just shows if we adjust the screen grid value it can vary and that is simply adjusting the screen grid voltage. Okay we have an oscilloscope nearby so let's have a look at that. Today we'll be using this device which is called a Monitor 28. It was originally designed as test equipment for the H2S radar. It'll do fine to show the output of our little phase shift oscillator. We turn the oscillator on, turn the monitor on we should soon see the waveform coming out of the phase shift. Now, the thing to bear in mind with a phase shift oscillator is the distortion figures are often not very good. Depending what you're planning on using it for, perhaps a test oscillator or a calibration oscillator or simply a reference like that, then that's fine. Um, but the thing to remember with this type of phase shift oscillator is you don't want to peak your screen voltage to give a maximum amplitude because that gives the maximum distortion. So this is this shows the difference. See this would be about the maximum up here. But we'll be running it down there for the, the lower distortion figure which is a much lower screen grid voltage. Um, look at a single cycle. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, focus that a little bit. Um, so um, what we'll do next is just to conclude this we will put a different valve in the oscillator, change obviously the wiring on the socket just to show how well it works with another valve as well. For a noticeable difference between the last valve and this valve we have a KT W61. This is our EF91 and this is the KTW61. So 
For the interest of this experiment, let's put the KTW61 in. We have rewired the socket to accept that. Clip for the top cap, that's grid 1. Now let's turn it on and see what happens. Quite different valve again, still a pentode. In fact, strictly speaking, it's a beam tetrode. But in the literature, it's, it calls it a pentode, effectively. It's about a milliamp it's taking there. Nothing on the scope so far. There we go. It's actually a smaller waveform than the other one, the F91. Um, the screen grid has been set at a much lower value, uh, although, and the resistor is 375k as opposed to 1 meg. Um, there's only 14 volts on the screen grid. If we adjust it, you can see that in fact it doesn't work a lot either side of that figure. Likewise, the current is around about a milliamp at best. We look at the waveform. That's the waveform. So there's not a lot wrong with that at all. So there you go. That is a basic phase shift oscillator using valves. Pretty much any pentode will work in that, but watch out for triodes. If you're going to use a triode, don't use a low gain or medium gain one, it might not work. Um, likewise, so remember that even with this one, this is showing a reasonable waveform, it's not very good distortion wise. Hope this has been some help, and um, so you use the values in here, and at least you know that it will work for you. Thank you.